Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. If this is your first time watching, I'm Chris, and on today's episode, I'm gonna try and answer that age-old question, how much solar do I need? If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing. Also, make sure to click the little notification bell when it pops up, uh, that way you're notified of when our videos go live. Um, be sure to check us out on whynotrvusa.com. We're also now on Patreon at patreon.com backslash whynotrv. And we have a Facebook group growing where we got no politics and no bullying whatsoever. Uh, just right on Facebook, Why Not RV. I'm going to put a link in the description for all that below. Let's get right into it. The first question you need to ask yourself is what do you want solar for? Is it to go boondocking? Is it to live full off grid life? Um, or is it just to kind of help lower your electric bill if you're at, say, a monthly spot that charges you electricity and you want to just lower that bill a little bit? So let's first get into that question a little bit and let's talk about each one of those things. If you just want to use solar for boondocking, you don't need nearly as much power as someone who wants to go full-time off-grid. Um, if you're just using it for boondocking and you're just using it for, you know, to keep your water pump going, um, you know, to keep uh, laptops charged, cell phones charged, watch TV, stuff like that, you really don't need that big of a system. You just got to figure out what, what you're going to use while you're boondocking versus someone who's living full-time off-grid. They might need to consider a little bit larger system um, to supplement for how much stuff they're using all the time. And maybe even as much as running the air conditioner off of solar, which is possible, but it does cost a lot of money. Uh, and then the last thing, like I said, is, is maybe just trying to supplement that electric bill. If you're at a campground and you have a monthly stay and they charge monthly rate plus electric and you just want to lower that electric bill, you can absolutely do that with solar. You can you can supplement your electricity usage with your solar. That's kind of how I have my rig set up right now um, because we're parked at home and we're not using the RV, but I do have the air conditioners running and I do have, you know, I come in here for doing some work on the rig and little projects here and there. So I have my RV plugged into the house, but it does not pull electricity from the house unless my batteries discharge all the way down to 20 percent um, so my ac runs off my uh, solar everything runs off the solar while it's parked and if the solar can't make up for that uh, throughout the day then it'll pull from the uh, shoreline and recharge my batteries back up to 100 percent so you can do the same thing if you're at a monthly spot and just be using your solar uh, and your batteries for what you're using uh, for what you're living it out of and then when the batteries get too low you can have it recharge your batteries back up and keep using and that'll use a lot less juice than using your electric uh you know from right from the meter all the time let's talk a little bit about what power you're consuming and what needs to be replenished so what that really breaks down to is how many watts are you using in a 24-hour period because that's the real question is in a 24-hour period how much power are you using we're going to go with watts um, in that 24 hour period that then needs to not only carry you through the night but also be recharged during the day and supplement for what you're using during the day so uh, let's talk a little bit about the difference here so what you're using overnight is what your battery bank is for so that's how you, t you you size your battery bank is what you're using power for overnight during the day as long as your solar is producing enough power you can have one battery it doesn't matter as long as the solar is producing enough power for what you're uh, using inside the RV. But once the lights go out and you have no more sun, you're going to need those batteries to carry you through the night. So that's how many uh, you know amp hours you need of battery life is basically what you're using overnight. So how do you figure that kind of stuff out? How can you know how much power you're using, how much power you're going to use? There's a lot of different ways of figuring this stuff out. Um, there's all sorts of different calculators online of, you know, you can input you know, your laptop wattage, your refrigerator wattage, your Instapot wattage, and everything that you plan on using on a daily basis, um, you know, and then what you have overnight. So you have a TV that's gonna run for two hours and it pulls 45 watts. And you have your cell phones that are gonna pull eight watts all night long or whatever the case is. There's all sorts of calculators out there. To me, it's not gonna really give you the full answer because one, a real life practicality, versus a, a calculator, it's two completely different things. So to me, the best way of knowing how much power you're using is to either get a battery monitor and install one, which uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and put a link up in the, in the description somewhere, one of these two corners here, of when I installed my battery monitor. 
Um, or you can also, if you have an electric meter at the park and you're being able to monitor your electricity usage, you can clock that in a 24 hour period and see how much uh, power you're using in 24 hours. Uh, or you can do it like over a week and count every single day and get an average just so you know your average. Once you've figured out how much wattage you're using in a 24 hour period, so let's just say, for example, uh, you have your battery monitor and you hooked everything up and you, you tested it for 24 hours and you're gonna use 8,000 watts. Now, the way that you have to figure out how much solar you're gonna use is now you have to be able to create 8,000 watts of solar at a minimum just to have what you're using it for. Now, you always, you always wanna add for a little bit of overkill um, if you wanna be able to live fully off the grid or you know be able to supplement that completely. Uh, and that's, again, this is all gonna be on you. Everyone's different, every situation is different. But let's just take that 8,000 watts, for example. So you have 8,000 watts of power that you need to recreate. Now, they say that you can count on about five or six hours of good sunlight throughout, a, throughout the day. So let's take 8,000 watts, divide that by, uh, let's just say six hours, and that gives us almost 1,400 watts per hour. So it is like 1333 infinity. Um, so, you know, 1,400 watts of power is what you would need to recreate that uh, solar or to cre recreate that 8,000 watts throughout the day. So you need a 1400 kilowatt system or 1400 watt, sorry, not kilowatt, 1400 watt system in order to recreate that 8,000 watts of power. Now, if you have a cloudy day, it's not going to cut it. If you have two or three rainy days in a row, it's not going to cut it. So some people account their battery bank size to supplement and be able to hold themselves over for sometimes two or three days so that they don't ever need to run the generator or need to run shore power. Now for my purpose, I don't do that. I, I have enough batteries for the day, maybe day and a half if I don't have solar. If that's it and my batteries are draining, I'm kicking on the, air, I'm kicking on the uh, generator and I'm gonna just recharge the batteries that way. I said that's what I'm doing with my solar right now. And what I mean is I'm parked at the house right now, so that's what I'm using my solar for. But once we're on the road, my solar settings are gonna change completely. I'm not gonna have it pull only when, uh, you know, the, the batteries get so low. I'm gonna have it basically set to run off pure solar unless I turn the generator on, um, which I'm basically gonna turn the generator on to run air conditioning because there's no reason to just drain my batteries super fast uh, with the air conditioning because those pull about 120 amp hours for one air conditioner and I have 960 amp hours of battery. So if I were to just run my air conditioner and air conditioner alone, it would drain the whole thing in what, six or seven hours, um, which is a pretty long time, don't get me wrong, but that's because I have a huge battery bank. I mean, I have almost a thousand amp hours of battery bank, but that's because I wanna be able to have my bedroom overnight, have the AC fan on all night long. We have uh, our phones charging, we have the humidifier on, and I want the AC to be able to come on and off throughout the night without draining my batteries. It's not gonna run for six, seven hours straight. It'll probably run for 10, 20 minutes at a time, multiple times. It might run for two or three hours overnight, and that's just enough to have my batteries keep me all night. But that's just me. You have to figure out what's for you. So when it comes to knowing how much solar you need for your, your RV, it's all preferential on what you're gonna use it for. There's no right answer, so don't, don't go asking everyone how much solar you're gonna need. It's all dependent on you and your needs. So you just have to figure that kind of stuff out. You have to figure out how much battery power you wanna have. You gotta figure out how many watts of solar you wanna recreate during the day. Um, you have to figure out your load. Are you just charging laptops and cell phones and maybe watching some TV? You probably don't need that much, but if you're trying to run the refrigerator, uh, you're trying to run air conditioning, stuff like that, you're gonna need a big battery bank and a lot of solar. That's it for this week's video. I hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the little notification bell, drop a like, leave a comment. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.